Welcome to this video. I want to go through making uh, certain textures in three dimensions in SolidWorks. This was applied and made in only a few minutes. You can see this is sort of a standard neural texture. This was uh, made in a mesh format, which SolidWorks does to save system resources. So these textures uh, have a lot of different options available, and they're very easy to do. You can even uh, use your own image files to make these textures. So let's go through a way of making 3D textures in SolidWorks. Uh, why don't we get started by importing a new part. And here we have the uh, import screen. Uh, notice that the bodies cannot be modified. The owning feature must be unlinked. Uh, if you ever come across that error, we'll simply right click on the top level dissolve feature. We're going to break the link. And then when we come back in to do uh, import diagnostics, you can uh, attempt to heal all. So some background on this, this was a, a hand grip that I made in FreeCAD. FreeCAD, it really is a wonderful surfacer. It has some features that you won't even find in SolidWorks. And uh, so I'm very confident that of course this is gonna heal just fine. And there we go, no faulty faces or gaps remain. So what if I wanna add a texture, a 3D texture on the back of this handle? Well, to do that, first I may want to specify exactly where I want the texture, excuse me, to be. So let's go to the top plane here, and let's create a sketch. And in fact, why don't I take my uh, tools off of my uh, task pane while I'm at it. Uh, so now that we're sketching on here, I want to add in a spline. Let's, of course, control eight to get close to our surface, and I'm going to add keep it simple by keeping this on one face for now let's add in a very simple you know profile uh, for hand grip and that looks about right to me so let's uh, exit the sketch it's a spline I'm not going to worry about constraining it let's go with features wrap and uh, we're going to do a deboss make sure that we're on a spline surface wrap and not an analytical wrap we want to choose this face and we're going to deboss that an eighth of a millimeter that looks pretty good perfect I can do the same thing um, on the other side perhaps a mirror would be appropriate and that way I can sort of consolidate my wraps let's go with uh, our top plane as a mirrored feature fantastic Oh, um, it looks like we need to select geometry pattern. It tried to copy our design intent, which uh, w wouldn't be a great thing, right? So we've got these little inserts here that uh, we can wrap on now. How do I actually add the 3D texture? That is going to come down to putting in a uh, an image file. And you can get one yourself off the internet, that um, preferably black and white. I, I think it'll do colored images too, but it's not meant to. But here I can put in appearance, right? Um, and if I come down here to miscellaneous and 3D textures, I can choose something like, oh, how about, how about a bow tie pattern? Because I am feeling fancy today, right? So I double click and a bow tie pattern shows up on this face. Not on the other face, but on this one. And from here I can edit um, anything that I want to about this bow tie pattern. So I can do appearances, and of course this is editing the the texture that I want to put on, and this is everything else that I don't care about, right? So we're going to go to this face, and I can scale this, right? I can scale this smaller to have more bow ties, <laughs> or larger. I can also go to advanced and mapping, and if I want to change my aspect ratio, or some of the hard dimensions, or you know, I can make this go at an angle, but I'm happy with the way that this looks. I also can apply a different image on this face if I wish. But for now, I'm happy with what I have, so I'm going to copy my appearance and paste it. And we choose the face to paste it, of course. From here, I can say insert. Uh, let's go with features. And then I'm going to choose 3D texture, and I'm going to choose this body to texturize. I'm going to take these two uh, points, right? So these, this is every appearance that's mapped onto a face, and of course I want both. 
And let's refine this to maybe something like 50% refined. And I think you might have to actually use this slider. Uh, right, so we have a 50% refinement. It kind of looks like a bow tie. We'll probably have to turn that up later. But let's protrude this a quarter of a millimeter so that these bow ties will stand a bit taller and a bit past uh, where they're being um, in that little insert there. And then maximum element size, let's turn that down, right? Maybe something like 0.409-ish, 0.402 here. And uh, this is correlated with processor activity, so you want to make sure that you uh, don't go up the exponential curve of processing this because it, it can and will happen. But there's my bow ties, and maybe I can take this up to something like a 90% refinement if I want to refine my pattern a little bit more. And again, I would say be careful <laughs> because this really is processor heavy. Okay, so there's 90% refinement. You can uh, you can be pretty clear on, on how good this is working. Let's next go to this next row, right? This is our other image. And I just want to put the same specs. We're going to put about 90% refinement on there. We're going to offset it the same amount. And we already have the same element size. So we're going to let this thing do its thing as it processes our mesh. I think we've done it. Oh, not yet. There we go. And uh, we're going to offset this a quarter millimeter. So that, that means that we're going to be uh, going to the same height as the other side. So if you notice the last uh, image that we had put in was a black background with white bow ties and so the white parts of the image stand up, right? That's a height map. So the more white it is, the more it stands up. Now we can actually um, have the power to reverse that but before I do of course I want to uh, accept this and save it so I don't run the risk of um, crashing or losing anything and let me save all right so this is my handle you can see it a little bit more clearly if I change the draw style here to shaded we've added some inserts with a pattern texture but one of the cool things that I can do is also reverse my height map so that black is an elevation and white is at surface level so this will probably throw off my inserts, but we're going to choose white up, black down, right? Or we're going to uncheck that rather. And this will reverse our pattern and also cause me to have to remesh everything and, <laughs> and process things. So here, now you can tell that we're actually going past where we had our indention and the bow ties are cut into the surface. So you always have that option to uh, do that, but I don't like it, so I'm going to go with my red X, and this is what my final model looks like. So I hope this video was helpful um, in having, or at least in helping you apply some of these meshes to your uh, project. Uh, if it was helpful, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.